Right, must not now lock the car or it'll never open again. Now, will this car start, I wonder? Been in here a few weeks since I last drove it. Yes, what a relief. Right, let's swap the cars around. Alpha's gonna live in here for a day or two. Not for long though, because I've got a couple of jobs I need to do on the Alpha. But the Mini has got a date with destiny right now. Unfortunately, it's not a date with an OBD reader to turn the airbag light off. So, here I am in the Mini. I've moved the camera closer because I'm shooting on the GoPro for just expediency and ease of use, because uh, I'm jumping from car to car. I had to drop another car where the Mini lives and then uh, change over vehicles and now I've done a quick run up to uh, to where am I going to? Screwfix because I needed a new shower pump because at the moment taking a shower in our house is like having a badger dribbling through a straw in the ceiling above you it's not a lot of fun it takes forever so I've gone and bought a new shower pump for that so yes I'm in the mini running errands because I've got a fair few cars on the channel not all of them get much screen time and uh, it's very much a case of the squeaky wheel getting the grease so cars that are broken or braking get a bit of a attention and airtime, whereas cars like this Mini, which just work, get a little bit ignored. So, in fact, um, two people lost that Tomcat in the last Mercedes video, and the simple fact is it's just been parked up. It's taxed, MOT'd and insured, but I haven't used it that much because it's parked away from home, so nothing's broken and nothing's broken so I've been ignoring it. <laughs> so maybe I'll just do a, a driving the Tomcat video at some point in the next few weeks. Anyway, yes. So why am I out in this non-squeaky wheel, I hear you ask? Well, there's a couple of little jobs that need sorting out on the Mini. Um, it's not particularly urgent, but the radio is retrofitted back to an original uh, correct spec CD head unit because uh, I had a, a fully functional Sony when I bought it and so I retrofitted a non-functional BMW Mini head unit. That's the logical thing to do. They are coded when they first go in to the car so you have to decode them to set them back to factory fresh then plug them in and then they code themselves to this car. So I need to take it out and send it off and I never got around to it. But what is more significant though is, I can't show you right now because it's in the ignition, the key. I've only got one key which is kind of fitting because I've only got one door lock as well. Minis have not got a door lock on their passenger door and there's no lock in the boot either. So if that door lock breaks, you are kind of on your own because you've got another way in, you're going to break a window or something. And especially if you're in my case, when the remote locking on the key fob does not work. So I've got one key, which doesn't remote unlock, one door lock, which is notoriously fragile and it feels really, really, crispy when I open it, like it's got the potential to cause me difficulties um, not too far in the future. You can get a key that will start the car relatively cheaply and easily, that's not a problem. Um, not that expensive either. However, if you want one that actually unlocks the car, links up to the BCU, BUM, body control module, not the bump, um, then you need to go and talk to Mini themselves and they will then rely on your wallet to the tune of 250 to 300 quid, which is quite a quite a steep thing, which is why I put it off for now because the key does work in the door and I've just lived with it. But now I'm starting to feel like it's a bit fragile, I can't live with it any longer. It turns out there's a guy in Scotland who does these incredible travels of the UK, looping around every county or several counties in one, and he will cut you a key which is linked to the car's computer and work on everything as it should be for, for half that basically. Now there is a, a possible oh no it's not going to work situation with this. If there is a problem with the body control module uh, or the bum as we will now call it from now on, um, then it won't link up and we'll never have central locking again in which case I'll have to go down the aftermarket um, route get the chap back in and did the alpha for me. So I just brought here, I just pulled out the EWS module from the bottom of the dashboard. He runs a company called Pixels Fixed in Glasgow, which is a long way from where I live, about as far as you can physically get in fact. But fortunately, every once in a while, he does a tour of the country, fixing things as he goes. He's like one of those pixies that comes around in the night and just fixes shoes for people, but with BMW and mini keys. Had three keys in the past. Oh really? Yeah, well, 
two, it always is two at the factory, so it's in one. But sometimes people specify the wee uh, valet key as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So sometimes all three came out of the factory. It's impossible to tell when it was. But incredibly, right now, I'm having a key cut for my Mini in my own drive. This is quite unusual. Am I your last one this this trip? Oh, no, oh, no. You're not even my last one today. Oh really? Oh my you're word. My second last one today. Oh my word. Alright, so this key should now start the car. This key. Oh no. No no. Oh yes. First time Excellent. It's, first time it's just uh, synchronizing oh, the Oh okay, yeah. Right, that's the easy bit done. No, yeah, I'm gonna make it open the doors. Had, I had one remote, yeah, it said one remote from the factory. Right. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever have you got a battery in it and stuff like that? Now we know the central walking is working. There should be really no reason why. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Shouldered by someone with absolutely oh God, can melt it, can't no shouldering skills whatsoever. Yeah, that's why it doesn't work. Well, that's, that's also why the case doesn't uh, open. Uh, open the car. That's the original key. Original key opens it and starts it. Thank you. Here's the one. Locks it. Oh, yeah. Doesn't unlock it. Well, I can hear everything apart from yeah, the driver's door. Driver's door. Everything else is. So, we need to get a new actuator, new actuator inside there. there. That's a shame. Yeah, it's but, a bit of a pity if it was anything else, but the street floor would appear in one well, That's brilliant, but we can hear it going on the passenger door, we can hear it going on the boot. So, yeah, 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 you can see the thing come up, yeah. yeah. So, we're, we're, and it'll lock itself, so we are 95% there ish. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take the positive view. Yeah, 75% there, but you're nearly there, yeah. Yeah, just need to go and find an actuator. Right, so there we go. Now I've got a key which will lock and unlock some of the doors. Before I order a new actuator, and I've just checked online, they're about 30 pounds, which is not a lot. We're like 77% fixed, because two out of the three opening apertures of this car for ingress now unlock themselves. They all lock themselves, which is awesome. When I'm parked away from a wall, I can open the car on the key and then climb through the passenger side to open the driver's door. Otherwise I will have to open it with the key, but I can at least still lock it with the key, which is a good thing. And we're massively reducing the wear and tear on that shonky little lock. Well, believe it or not, opening every door in the car apart from the driver's door on the remote lock got old very quickly. So I'm gonna take the door card off and uh, have a look at the actuator mechanism. Apparently they do go bad a lot, so the chance of it's broken on the inside of the unit. Um, I did say I could find one for £30 or so online, second hand, but I've been told, yeah, it's not worth buying a second hand one because chances are it'll just break in no time anyway, it's about 120 or so for a mini, so. I didn't want to be kneeling in that or dropping my tools in it either. Tiny screwdriver will be the order of the day. Oh god, that's broken already. There you go. They always break. They always, always break. Now the book says wind the window down and if I remember well I've got this window door sorry, I've got this door card off I will try and remember to grease whatever's squeaking inside it. It's not doing it too badly today. It's worse when it's cold and when it is cold it sounds deafeningly loud. Now, I actually thought I'd managed to beat the uh, recording interrupted problem by only recording to the SD slot not to the XQD slot in this um, camera. Um, and I thought I was not having any more recording interrupted. It didn't seem to have happened to adding for a while, but I've just missed the entire process of taking the door card off the door. 
which is basically slide your trim tool behind the thing, lever it very gently. It was very reluctant to come off. It was very, very stiff and tight. It felt like it had probably never been taken off the car in its entire 20 year life. So luckily it all seems to have come off without braking. But I have just noticed that this loudspeaker here is looking a little worse for words. I think before I put this door card back on, I might do a little uh, speaker upgrade because that's not special. This is basically the same situation I had with the, uh, the Rover Tomcat. Those speakers are about a decade older though, but in exactly the same condition. And the book says you're supposed to take the glass out to, to reach this, and then you can undo these three T25 little screws on the end of the door. I've been onto the internet and YouTube, so it must be true, says you can work around this by just slackening off two bolts at the bottom, which apparently are already slack. Um, and, uh, and find it that way. By the way, I will not miss an opportunity to say don't forget to check out the store which is currently on Redbubble with all the stickers of Alpha, Honda in Japanese, Furious Driving, T-Shelf and many other Rover and other stickers which helps me to buy bits for this car. So if I just slacken off those two bolts I can raise up the window a little bit and get away without having to undo everything else. And this one is actually only finger tight already, it's halfway out the bottom of the door. Interesting, that was literally half a centimetre out the foot, but you can see the rust line on it. You can see it was that far out of the door already, so I'm surprised it hadn't... Oh, it was. You can see it was damaging the plastic of the, the door shut, the kick plate. So I'm glad we got to that. Or maybe you do need to take the regulator out, because I'm not sure I can get this past it. It's a lot brighter on the phone than it is in real life. Ah, oh, yeah, the lock, the door lock itself also connected. I've got the door release uh, cable unclipped, which is a horrible job. Uh, you need to undo the wire and this now as well, which is surprisingly tricky. It would have been a lot easier to do this where it's still attached to the door. Oh boy. There we go, it's out. So this is the broken thing that no longer works. I can't actually get the plug back onto there just to test it. There we go, there's the keys. Clicks one way, doesn't click the other. Which means I need a new one. have to go see if I can get one same day because the car is not going to lock and the door is not going to shut as long as it's all dangling in the, in the air. It's interesting looking at this thing on eBay it looks really small it doesn't give you any indication how big this thing really is. So to get an allen key into the bottom of the lowered window reach into here and do that and then you can free the glass and lift the glass out one on either end. But this is rock solid. Right, so now after several hours of sunburn and stress and swearing, I've given up and brought the car to someone who knows what they're doing. I've brought the car to Palmer Works, which is a mini specialist where unfortunately there is copyright music playing in the background, so I'm narrating this behind the scenes. After several hours of struggling with the Allen key, as the Haynes manual says you need to do to separate the glass from the window regulator, I could feel all I was doing was damaging the nut, the bolts, the, the bit where you put the Allen key. So I brought it here to figure out what I was doing wrong. Turns out you really can't use an Allen key, it's far too tight for such a small uh, area of contact. You need something on the outside and there is a special tool which even with that turns out to be extremely difficult. That was the first thing I realised I was doing wrong. The second thing I realised I was doing wrong is that you need to be doing this outside the door. You have to unclip the cables from within the door so you can then manoeuvre the internal and external door handle connection cables to outside the door, then you can connect it quite happily, then refit it all correctly. It's not physically possible to do it with the lock in place, which is something I didn't know either. The third thing which I hadn't realised because I hadn't reached that far down the line of despair and failure, was that you have to put the cables in exactly the right place. They can't have to be the right side of things, otherwise as soon as you operate the door, they will ping off and disconnect and then leave you in the lurch. This is another thing I was not aware of. 
of. So guess what? We've now got a new, interesting and exciting problem because although the door lock is now fitted correctly as it should be, after we locked it and unlocked it twice, it won't unlock anymore from the inside or the outside, from the button on the side here, from the button on the dashboard, from the key. So basically we've got a faulty component and the door is now shut. So how the hell do you get the thing out again? I'm now at the mini main dealer to try and see what they suggest about getting the door open when the lock mechanism is frozen. I'm back from the dealership. In fact, it's a day later because I had to go back again a second time to go and get another little cardboard box of bits. I knew it was going to be a good experience when I turned up because I went and saw the parts person who I'd seen previously and sold me the door lock and he was very apologetic saying, well, if it's a, a part problem, then obviously we need to sort this problem out. So the senior uh, technician came out and he was very excited. I knew I was going to be in for a good experience with them when he walked out and said, oh, so are we, are we looking at the dealer spec car? I've never seen a wire edge before and I really want to. And he was very happy to pour all over it. And he found a way, or he knew a way of actually unlocking or unlatching the door from the inside and found a problem which is common on later minis actually, yeah, most on country mini set, where the cable from the exterior door handle rusts on the inside and that makes the cable extend or grow just a fraction of a millimetre or so. And that then, when it's locked, puts pressure on the lock mechanism which won't allow it to unlock. So by reaching the door and sort of pushing on that cable in the right direction, you can then free it off. So I've had to be so careful not to lock this car for the last day or so, so I don't do it again. Um, but he was so excited to see the car and this is one of the best things about owning a car like this that people who know that it's rare are really quite excited to see. I was very happy to let him sort of wander around it, take a look at it, take photos of it, and yeah, anything he wanted to look at, more than happy to let him uh, take a look. So that, for me, that's the, the great thing about owning an unusual rare car. It's got bringing, sharing the joy. The other day I was in a car park and a guy was waiting by the, my Alpha 145 because he'd never seen one before and just wanted to take a photo of it. So that, that kind of makes my day. Anyway, so off the back of that, they sorted me out a very good price on this, which is a new door handle. It's already had a door handle on the passenger side because the cable actually snapped on the passenger side. So it's probably not a bad thing to be doing the door handle on the driver's side as well. This car's got about 130-ish thousand miles or so. So that's likely to break at some point in the future. So it's brand new, very, very shiny. I will drop it back out to Palmer Sport, uh, Palmer Works, sorry, um, tomorrow morning um, when he can then fit me in. I'll leave it with him. I won't film it again because it's really quite dull to watch because all you're seeing is someone with a hand inside the door. It doesn't make good video. And while he's doing that, I can be out on the Mercedes doing welding that you can see. See, I'm thinking ahead. Right, so join me again tomorrow when hopefully I'll be collecting it with working doors. So I'm now putting the car away for the night, but I must not hit the lock button because if I do, I will never get back into this car again because all the other opening apertures are against fences. So I'd have to take a fence down to get into the car. So must not lock the car tonight. I'm gonna park another car in front of it so nothing can steal it. I'm taking everything of value out so nothing can steal that. And just hope the family of badges hasn't broken in and made a home in there by the morning. So now I am home and it works. Door locks, door unlocks, door opens, door closes, door locks again. This is the first time I've ever had a fully 100% functioning remote central locking system on this car in the five years I've owned it. So this is quite an exciting moment. Indy, be quiet. In this particular case, I am so, so glad I handed it over to the specialist. Now, Kevin at Palmer Works has done must have been a thousand of these door handles and he can do them kind of blindfolded. Unfortunately, this one was an absolute pig to do and he reckons it took him an hour and a half, two hours to change the door handle on this thing, which is a lot of time. It's an insanely fiddly job. And if I'd been doing it myself, I would still be there tomorrow trying to get this done. So in terms of time allocation, it was good because I could leave him doing that while I got on with welding the Mercedes. And also it's not great video. Man with hand inside door does not make for great viewing. <laughs> no matter how much swearing is going on, it gets boring pretty quickly. So I think this is good use of time letting him do that for me. So this is a major development. It cost a lot more in terms of time and money than I was ever expecting. I thought it was gonna cost me a new key, which was, you know, hundred and something pounds. So it's a fairly big layout, just for the luxury of being able to push a button and get in the car rather than having to turn a key manually. Of course, that then turned into buying a new door lock, which was a hundred and something more as well, and a new door handle, which was 
uh, even more as well. Plus, of course, the labour from Palmer's to actually fit the door handle and the door lock. But we're done. We now have a working mini. All I need to do now is unlock it. <clears throat> is get my radio back from the uh, code people. Get some new speakers in here because these are not good. Decide which of the door cards to put back on and then get the air conditioning sorted out. It's way too hot in this car without air conditioning. Then my 99% brilliant mini is going to be 100% brilliant. Brilliant, which is a good thing, I'm going to say. Right, thanks for watching. This has been a saga I had not planned. Most of these videos, I think I've got some idea where they're going to go. This time, it was a bit of a roller coaster for me, as much as maybe for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Join me again soon. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.